going on guys? Landon here with Late Model Restoration and today I'm going to be breaking down Ford Racing Hot Rod cams and intake manifold fitting the 2005-2010 Mustang GT. Ford Racing is dedicated to manufacturing the highest quality products offered in the Mustang market. Several of Ford Racing's parts have made their way onto a ton of project cars here at Late Model Restoration, all of which have maintained an OEM fit and finish. The Ford Racing Hot Rod cams were designed with a few things in mind. To increase horsepower and torque across the entire power band and add some serious bumpity bump to your three valve Mustang. These camshafts are engineered for naturally aspirated and supercharged applications to cover a wide variety of engine setups. It is recommended that these cams be used with long tube headers to achieve significant power gains as well as a Ford Racing intake manifold and throttle body. These hot rod cams will increase lift from the stock 11 millimeter 433 thousandths to 12 millimeter 472 thousandths. Intake and exhaust duration will be 220 and 240 degrees at 50 thousandths lift with a lobe separation of 110 degrees. You can still use your factory valve springs, followers, and latch adjusters up to 6800 RPMs. You'll need a timing chain wedge tool, valve spring compressor, and new cam phaser bolts prior to install and a custom tune is required once you do get these cams installed. Lastly, Ford Racing does include thorough instructions with all needed torque sequences and specs. Now that we have the hot rod cams covered, let's dive into the Ford Racing intake manifold. This intake manifold will offer a lightweight composite construction, high flow runners, and an open plenum design. It will fit under a stock hood and will allow gains across the entire power band. Ford Racing has tested this intake up to two bar pressure which makes it a perfect addition for any of you guys with forced induction. It will even feature built-in intake manifold control deletes, or also known as the charge motion runner control deletes. All needed hardware is included, along with detailed installation instructions, and like the cams, a custom tune is required. Let's get to the good stuff, fellas. We're gonna show you how to install both the Ford Racing Hot Rod cams and intake manifold into this Windville Blue GT. But first, let's get it strapped down to the dyno and see what it makes with the current modifications which is a Steeda cold air intake kit, a BBK 62 millimeter throttle body, Ford Racing shorties, off-road X-pipe, a Ford Racing Stinger catback, 373 gears, a one-piece aluminum drive shaft, and custom tent. Not bad for an automatic car. It made 281 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque. Now, follow along guys as we show you the detailed steps on installing the Ford Racing Hot Rod cams and intake manifold. To begin installation, disconnect the fuel pump driver module. This is located in the trunk near the spare tire. Start the car and allow it to idle until it stalls. Disconnect the negative battery cable and remove the strut tower brace if equipped. Slide the red locking tab back and disconnect the mass airflow sensor connection. Disconnect the passenger side PCV from the intake elbow. Loosen the hose clamps from the coupler between the throttle body and intake elbow. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt holding the air box to the fender apron and remove the intake from the car. Disconnect any electrical connections on the driver's side. Back on the passenger side, remove the PCV connection from the valve cover and disconnect the throttle position sensor from the throttle body. Remove the driver's side PCV connection from the intake manifold and valve cover. Disconnect any electrical connections on the passenger side, including the fuel injector and coil on plug connections. Now, disconnect the driver's side fuel injector and coil on plug connections. Remove the EVAT vacuum line from the intake manifold and disconnect the fuel supply line with the fuel line removal tool. Have some rags ready to catch any fuel that may run out of the fuel rail. Remove the eight bolts from the coil on plugs and remove them from the car. For some reason, a boot becomes unattached from the body of the plug. Simply remove the boot from the cylinder head with a pair of pliers. Finish removing any electrical connections that could still be connected. Disconnect the CMCV or charge motion control valve connection on the back of the intake manifold. Remove the fuel rail bolts and remove the fuel rails from the car. Have some rags ready to catch any fuel that may run out of the injectors. It may help if you zip tie some of your electrical connections and fuel supply line out of your way. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt from the intake manifold and bring the manifold forward to disconnect the rear vacuum line. Now you can remove the factory intake manifold and throttle body from the car. Take this time to carefully 
clean around the intake ports in the cylinder head and cover the holes with quality masking tape or rags. Position both the driver and passenger side electrical wiring toward the bottom of the valve cover. Remove the dipstick bolt from the engine block and carefully remove the dipstick from the car. Position the timing mark on the crank pulley to the one o'clock position. This can be done by rotating the crank pulley bolt with the breaker bar and 18 millimeter socket. With compressed air, blow away any debris that could be sitting where the valve cover and cylinder head meet. Starting on the driver's side, loosen the eight millimeter valve cover bolts and remove the valve cover. Carefully scrape away the old RTV from the gasket and remove the gasket. Clean the area where the valve cover gasket was and stuff some rags into the exhaust ports and the cylinder head. Ensure that the cam lobes on cylinder number five are coming up on the exhaust stroke. Position the valve spring compressor over one of the intake valves on cylinder number five. Compress the spring and remove the camshaft follower. Do the same for the other intake valve and remove the follower. Now, locate the exhaust valve over cylinder number seven. Remove it as well. Rotate the crankshaft clockwise until the timing mark is at the seven o'clock position. Spray the cam phaser with quality brake clean and mark the chain and phaser. Next, position the timing chain wedge tool in between the timing chain and chain guides. Ensure that the tool is installed square to the timing chain and engine block. Remove the camshaft position sensor from the timing cover. Carefully loosen and remove the cam phaser bolt with a 15 millimeter socket. Discard this bolt since you will be using a brand new one. Loosen and remove the bolt on the camshaft front bearing cap. Remove the bearing cap. Now, remove the remaining bearing caps in the sequence shown. Clean and inspect each bearing cap. Ensure there is no foreign material in the oil metering groove located on the front thrust bearing cap. Carefully separate the cam and phaser, and then remove the cam from the cylinder head. Install the new Ford Racing camshaft in the phaser and onto the cylinder head. Lubricate the camshaft journals with assembly lube or fresh engine oil. Be sure and lubricate the caps with fresh engine oil or assembly lube. Install the camshaft bearing caps in their original locations. Refer to the illustration for the correct torque sequence. Torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Apply fresh engine oil to the new phaser bolt and finger tighten. Verify the phaser and timing chain marks are still in alignment. Finish tightening the new phaser bolt and torque to 30 pound feet. Tighten an additional 90 degrees with a torque degree gauge. You can now remove the timing chain wedge tool. Rotate the crankshaft a half turn counterclockwise so that the timing mark is at the one o'clock position. Position the valve spring compressor over the valves as to which the camshaft followers were removed. Compress the spring and reinstall the follower into place. Do the same for the other intake valve on cylinder number five and the exhaust valve on cylinder number seven. Reinstall your camshaft position sensor. Clean any missed areas around the variable cam timing sensor and cylinder head. Remove the rags from the exhaust ports. Apply fresh engine oil to the top of the cam lobes. Clean any foreign material from underneath the valve cover. Apply a small amount of RTV where the cylinder head and valve cover meet. For this install, we decided to top the cams off with a nice set of Ford Racing blue valve covers. Reinstall your valve cover and torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Repeat these exact same steps for the passenger side. Now that the cams are installed, let's move to the Ford Racing intake manifold. Start by cutting the fuel line off the nipples on the fuel rails. Clean the fuel injectors with quality brake clean. Remove the alternator bracket using 8mm and 10mm sockets. Enlarge the smaller of the two holes using a quarter inch drill bit. Reinstall the alternator bracket and torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Using pliers or an adjustable wrench, bend the tab forward to approximately a 45 degree angle. Remove the rags or masking tape from the cylinder head intake ports and clean any missed areas. Assemble all the dress up bolts in the new intake manifold. Blow the Ford Racing manifold free of any potential foreign debris. Route the included fuel crossover line underneath the manifold with the paint mark oriented toward the driver's side. Position the Ford Racing intake manifold onto the cylinder heads. Attach the push pin into the modified hole on the alternator bracket. Use the two long bolts and thin washers for the center locations. These bolts should be started first, but do not tighten. The mid-link bolts are for the front two bolt locations, and the short bolts are for the remaining open locations. Lube all the bolts with anti-seize or fresh engine oil. 
Hand start all the bolts before snugging or torquing any of them down. Use the illustration shown for the appropriate torque sequence. Torque all the bolts to 89 inch-pounds. Apply a small amount of fresh engine oil to the fuel injector O-rings. Reinstall both fuel rails into the intake manifold and connect the crossover line. Torque the fuel rail bolts to 89 inch-pounds. Transfer both vacuum line connections from the factory intake manifold. Also, transfer the stock throttle body and torque the bolt to 70 inch-pounds. Now is the time to reposition all the electrical wiring and connect any of the removed connections. The only connection that will remain open will be the charge motion control valve connection at the back of the intake manifold. Give everything a solid once over and you're all done. Well guys, it's time to get her back on the dyno. Of course, we reflashed the PCM with an updated tune, so let's see what she makes. numbers are 315 horsepower and 318 pound-feet of torque, which is good for a gain of 34 peak horsepower and 9 pound-feet of torque. Honestly guys, these are some solid respectable gains for an automatic car. Plus, the sound alone makes this a must-have performance mod for any three-valve owner. As always, fellas, feel free to drop us a comment with any questions. All the needed links are in the video description and we'll get you back to late model restoration. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel for the best install videos out there and pick up some Ford Racing Hot Rod cams and an intake manifold for your Mustang at latemodelrestoration.com.